and welcome back to Tangent Animation Blender Tutorial 2.0 Introduction to Keyframing and the Graph Editor. This series is 2.0 and onward because now we're going to actually start doing stuff instead of just looking at stuff. So speaking of animation and the graph editor, where do we start? Well, we could start with a whole character. However, that might get real complicated real fast. So we'll reduce our expectations a bit. A simpler character? Uh, he looks pretty bummed. Maybe even simpler? Let's dial it right back down. You know what? I have a ball. Perhaps you'd like to bounce it. That's right. We'll learn the animation editing tools right from the basics, the bouncing ball, and in the same exercise, graduate to editing the cycle to the diminishing bounce. Let's go! So here I am with my ball character in the Blender default animation window setup. There's my character, and that is ball in the outliner. So the first thing I want to do is actually select the controller. So there's a controller down here, and there's only one for the ball. I grab that. That's fine. This is a good time to review the different selection types. If I select the geometry, that will put me into object mode. If I select the armature, I want that to be in pose mode. That's a very important distinction. In object mode, being in object mode on the armature is basically going to offset the container the armature is in. So it won't actually be starting from its triple zero position. So make sure that you are moving armatures in pose mode. We're going to put that right back. So the first thing that we need to do is set a keyframe on our character at frame one. As always, there's more than one way to do that. Right now, my key set is set to the standard default of locate, rotate, scale. For our current purposes, that is fine. I'm going to highlight the top of my window so I know that window is active. Hit I. That is set keyframes on all the translates, all the rotates, all the scales. Now, I can undo that. If I want to, what I can do is, since I want to deal solely with Translate Z, which in Blender is up and down, I can right mouse click on Translate Z and do an insert single keyframe and key just that. If I use the other function, insert keyframes, it will do all three. I'm going to undo back to the singular just for cleanliness. Now, I want to create my next keyframe. My first keyframe was at frame one. I'm going to go into my time slider. I'm going to reduce what I'm seeing in my time slider so the numbers make a little bit more sense. I'm going to go out to frame 17. And I'm going to put this into a new position. I'm going to move that armature up, make that a clean value of five. I moved it manually. I'm going to input five into the channel. And I can key that parameter again. What I can also do is turn on auto key, move it and adjust it manually, it will key for me, or also if auto key is on, I can enter it numerically. Now, one thing that's worth noting, I'm going to go back in my undo queue a couple of steps. I got to that by hitting control alt Z. I'm going to go back to when I set the value to positive five. I'm going to move the armature with auto key on again, auto key. Please note that when auto key is on with its default settings, even though I'm moving solely in the Z parameter, all of them will get keyframed. If we want to amend that, we have to go into our preferences and make a change. So we're going to undo that and go into our preferences. So here's our user preferences. I'm going to switch from interface over to editing. That is where my options for auto keyframing are. I'm going to turn this checkbox on, only insert available and save those settings. Now with auto key turned on, and you can tell that's depressed when it goes dark gray, honestly a siren or something should go off when that is on. Now if I move this, auto key will function but will only function on the parameter that already has keyframes on it. So I'm going to put that back to five. That is more like the default functionality of Maya auto keyframing. It's a little less inherently destructive and is not going to write out as many static keyframes that you'll have to clean up later. So let's get ready to set our next key, and that's going to be out at frame 31. I'm going to start moving this guy down, but I also know that's going to be at the level of zero. So now I have some actual keyframes to look at, and we can see that I have keyframes both in my timeline and now visible in my graph editor. So this is our first opportunity to look at the functionality of the graph editor. So the first things that you need to know are how to navigate in here. 
So once again, the navigation is fairly similar based on the middle mouse key and the control key. So if I depress those, I can zoom vertically and horizontally as I so see fit without releasing the mouse button. That's very nice. If I want to frame, I hit decimal on the numeric keypad as well, as is the case in almost every other window. You can also hit shift B to draw a marquee box to zoom to a very specific area. And if I have a lot more curves in there, we'll get to that later, I could also just hit home. Home will frame everything that you have visible, be that multiple curves or multiple curves on multiple objects. So here's my first animation curve, my first keyframes, and my first set of tangents. So let's have a look and see what we have so far. So we can either hit the play button down here, the hot key for that is Alt A. Alt A, our character starts to move. We're not going to win any Annie Awards for that, but we are going to proceed. So let's look at our first set of keyframes here. Now also please note, as I scrub, I can scrub in both the timeline and in the graph editor. Watch the coloring in the channel box. The channel will turn yellow when I'm actually on one of the keyframes and green when I'm on in-betweens between the keys. Now, selection works largely the same as it does in the other editors. I can go right mouse click, context sensitive on the keyframes. You know, requires a bit of unnecessary precision. Or I could also use other selection tools. I can hit A to deselect, A to reselect everything that is visible. Or the best tool is probably B to draw a selection box around what I want. And I can also use Shift Control, left mouse button for the lasso tool, which will deselect. Yet another selection tool that you can use is the paint tool that you can access through hitting the C key in the graph editor, hold down the left mouse button and paint over the objects that you want to select. Now you can also increase and decrease the size of the paint area. And if you hold down shift, you can also selectively deselect objects with the paint tool as well. Now, there is one particular oddity to be very conscious of in Blender. What I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect my armature. Nothing is currently selected, nothing is up in the graph editor. I'm going to reselect it. You'll notice that the keyframe that I had selected previously is still selected. I'll just show you that again. I'll select another one, go to the 3D window, deselect the armature, reselect it. Keyframes will stay selected until they are specifically deselected. You can do that with the A key. Now once again, that is potentially very dangerous because it is possible that you could have keyframes off screen that are active. And if you start doing transform operations, it's possible that if you hit the G key, you could be moving keyframes that aren't even on screen. So I'm just gonna hit home to reframe everything that I have. So a very good habit when you select any object and get into the graph editor is to hit the A key to deselect so that you're working clean to ensure that you have nothing selected off screen or something you've forgotten about. So how do we start potentially manipulating this curve? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it and go through the basic tangent options. If I hit the T key, which is the tool key, I will get a couple of different options here. So the first one that I'll show you is constant. And that is basically the same as the Maya step tangent so the object will pop back and forth to the keyframe positions. Back to T, and then to linear. Linear is just as you would expect, a complete linear interpolation from key to key. Now, there's a bit of a difference here. This is a very specific mode. When you're in linear mode, there are no tangent handles to grab. Linear is quite simply linear. When you want to start actually shaping the curves with tangents, you have to go to the next mode, T, and we're going to go to Bezier. Bezier is the equivalent of spline in Maya, French mathematical term, Bezier. So you'll note that it's only done it to the selected key. So what I'm going to do is select them all, T, Bezier, and now I have smooth interpolation from key to key, a la the spline tangent in Maya. So that is Bezier. 
Okay, that was a very basic overview of the nuts and bolts of keying and the interface of the graph editor. Now it's time to jump into the next unit, shaping and editing your animation curves. See you in 2.1.